Hi there and happy December! I will begin this video at the beginning of the month when it was really cold and clear. We didn't get a lot of snow because there were just so many sunny days, a rarity this time of year here so I'm definitely not complaining, but it was still really cold. In the mornings as I walked my kids to preschool it was minus 18 degrees outside and it felt even colder than that. But the whole world was just glistening in this like sparkly dream because everything had become crystallized ice. It was beautiful. On this day, I was in the forest gathering stuff to make a holiday wreath with. In this video, I want to talk about some ways that you can create, especially this time of year, with forged evergreens like spruce and pine and fir and juniper. Today I kind of struck gold here because it looks like a group of kids had made a fort or you know like a, a tree house on the ground. We call it in Swedish uh, koya. Um, and, and so it looks like they just pulled a bunch of pine branches down and a lot of sticks and stuff to build this little fort to play in. So it made my task of finding forged materials quite easy. I walked home with a basket full of pine branches and some silver birch twigs that I hope to make the ring backing for the wreath with. And now I'm just going to enjoy the forest a little bit on my way home. I've been reading this book recently called Wild and Elemental Journey, written by Jay Griffiths. And I'm currently just about to finish up the chapter on ice, where Griffiths uh, travels to the Arctic and the Antarctic. There she just immerses herself in the element of ice, but she also gets to know a lot of indigenous cultures that we haven't really heard much about throughout the course of European and American history. We are told this story of this blank land where nothing existed, where it was all very hostile, and you just get to know a different side of that reality and that story through this book as she travels there and learns from indigenous people who have spent hundreds of thousands of years in these places and really have a deep knowledge of what it means to live there and be a part of the land. I can really highly recommend the book. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. But for now, it's 2.30 in the afternoon and the sun is already setting. As we approach the winter solstice, the days are short. We're lucky to get four or maybe five hours of daylight. And for me, it's just really important to get outside during those hours if possible. But it also helps to make the home environment really cozy. So we've spent a good part of this month in December doing just that trying to be outside and trying to bring elements of nature inside. So here is my basket of twigs and branches that I found on the forest floor. Most of them are silver birch, I believe, which these are usually quite good for wreath making as they're quite flexible. And the first step of making a wild wreath is to make the ring backing, or you know, like the thing that you attach the green branches to. And it's really as simple as taking a few thin branches or twigs that are around the same length, gathering them into a little bundle in your hand and then bending them into a circle, leaving some overhang on one side that can be tucked over the other side and, and to secure the ring. And I'm gonna try and show you here. However, I did struggle this year. I think my branches are too thick. You really need your branches to be as thin as possible and you may need to experiment with various types of tree branches or twigs in order to find one in your area that works well for this task. But also, if you forage on a really cold day, as I did, you should let your branches warm up inside for a day or so before trying to bend them into shape. They'll be a lot more flexible when they're warm. Anyway, it's totally okay to use some floral wire or some string, as I have done here, to help keep everything together. Eventually, I did get this stack of silver birch branches into a decent ring and I did it, get it secured with the help of some wire that's, um, it's like a jute wire that I use. 
but also if you check the description box I will link to this other person's YouTube channel and they're they've made a YouTube video that is a lot simpler than this and they they just like nail it uh, obviously more professional than I am and perhaps far more qualified to be sharing videos like this on YouTube but anyway if I can do it so can you and I promise it can be easier than this so check the description box for a link but in the end it was all worth it I want to show you how the wreath turned out it's a little bit on the wild side which I really don't mind and we put some uh, dried eucalyptus leaves that we took from, from our garden this summer and I think it looks quite nice. Sadly I did not get the actual wreath making process filmed because my four-year-old son Axel really wanted to do this with me that same evening. He loves Christmas so much. I don't really mean the presents thing although of course he's not opposed to getting presents but he is obsessed with all of the Christmas creating the wreath the Christmas cards the Christmas tree the cookie baking the songs Well, that was a classic kid song about three gingerbread men. Anyway, I lost the battle of keeping the tree ornament free again this year, and as quickly as winter came, it retreated. Within just a few days, all of the snow and ice melted. But Christmas still comes anyway, and the merriness must go on. This is third Advent Sunday now, and we're back in the forest to gather materials for a few other little projects we want to try out. What kind of tree do you think this is? I'm Beacon. taking the Beacon. ice off. Oh, you're taking the ice? Yeah. Ice. Little icicles. That's cool. Some sort of fir tree. Can you get it Yeah, you can actually taste it. You can chew it up and taste it. I like to do that sometimes. This one? Hello? Mmm. Just kind of bite into it. Mm, this is a good one. Maybe the green one. Yeah, just take a green needle. Take a green, you know, and just kind of chew it on in your teeth, your front teeth. Mm. It tastes good, doesn't it? Mmm. Super good. Pine. It's a small pine. This looks. What's that? Are you cold, buddy? Yeah. Can I put on your jacket? No. You want to put on mittens? No. Why not? Do you want to do some running? Get some body heat? We to run with you. Want to run with me? Yeah. Where shall we run? Up there? Uh, yeah. Okay. To that big rock. All right, you go first. Okay. Okay. I'm after you. <laughs> you did. Wow, this is amazing. This is. Yeah, What's, it's got a lot of lichen going on. It's super nice. This is beautiful. Is this too much nicer? This is too much nicer. If it was any nicer, I think my heart would explode. So I have found some beautiful moss here. I love this like white. I really light green color moss. I think it's just so beautiful. It contrasts so nicely with the green, as you can see, and it's incredibly soft. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi. You see this? Yeah. This is fur.
there. On the journal recently, I have shared some tips about how to create with evergreens that you can forge from nature, like spruce, uh, fir, juniper. And so I just came home and kind of just tried some things with it. I took the fir needles, uh, some of them, and made this mantle here. Just nothing special. I didn't tie them together. I didn't do anything. I just laid them out, dried them a little bit so it wouldn't ruin the wood at all. So it wasn't dripping or anything like that. And then I just laid them across the mantle and then put some candles throughout. Um, and it's really that simple. It's very cozy. It looks really nice. I'm happy with it. And I thought about doing some other stuff, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like it is. And then we got just a couple handfuls of moss uh, that was already kind of coming off of the stones. So we brought them home and um, put them in our lanterns, again with candles. <laughs> candles are very important here in Sweden in the winter. So it looks really cozy, actually. My son wanted to put a pine cone in there as well. So in, uh, in one of the lanterns, we have a pine cone in with a moss and it actually looks super nice. And then I've done a few other things. I took some juniper branches and um, I laid them over a block of butter and wrapped it up in wax paper. And I'm gonna test this out. Usually I make what you call compound butters where you um, process the plant material like the juniper sprigs or the, the leaves, the needles from the juniper branch with the butter and you make this really nice herbal butter. But um, there's this woman in Sweden called Lis Lisen Sundgren. And she gave the tip on her Instagram recently that you could just basically take, skip that whole step, step of processing into a compound butter and you can instead just wrap the sprigs of juniper up with some butter, put it in wax paper, put it in the fridge for a few days and it will slowly absorb the flavors. Soon I hope to share the results of that with you. We can maybe do that on, on camera. I can unwrap it and we can taste it and see how it goes. Another thing I have done with the juniper sprigs is I have layered them with some brown sugar or like raw sugar basically, like a, I don't know what you call it in English, just raw unprocessed sugar. You could also use brown sugar or you could even use honey and you layer them in a jar. Here, I will actually show it to you. So this is it here. I don't know if you can see. It's supposed to be this very traditional way of making syrup. So basically what people did in the old days was they would layer spruce needles or whatever with sugar and they would squirrel it away somewhere. In fact, in some cultures, they even bury it in the ground and then they dig it up in the spring. Uh, we can't, I, I don't really see how that would work here in Sweden. Our ground is pretty frozen. It's like minus 20 degrees sometimes here. So I don't really know how that would work. Um, instead, I just put it in the windowsill or people say you can put it in the windowsill and give it a couple of months. And slowly but surely the sugar is going to turn liquidy as the, the sugars and the compounds, uh, the, all the stuff that's trapped in here in this jar, it's going to kind of macerate uh, the juniper flavor into the sugar and turn into a syrup that you can strain off and use like you would maple syrup. It just has a really different flavor, of course. It will have a flavor of, of juniper instead of maple. Some people do it with pine and say that it's a great cough syrup remedy. Um, I have no idea if that's true or not, but I certainly think it cannot hurt. I think there's so many beneficial compounds in these evergreen needles. There is a reason why they are available to us in the winter, I think. I think nature gives us just what we need when we need it. I will say the only one you want to stay away from is you. If you don't know what you looks like or what it is, I would make that my first step, is to make sure I know what you is and you want to avoid that. It is very poisonous or it can be extremely poisonous. But um, everything else, hemlock <clears throat> is another one. At least hemlock here is not poisonous. I'm not sure, I, I think there is a poisonous variety. Also, I mean, of course you need to get to know the varieties in your neck of the woods, as we say. My partner and I has, have also been into cocktail making recently. So that's super fun to experiment with, especially when you can go out into the nature and you can pick things like spruce and juniper berries and things like that to infuse the spirits with. Um, you can make simple syrups out of them to add to cocktails. Um, there's just yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. I wanna do a whole video on cocktail making, I think one day. I think we've, we've been learning a lot and experimenting a lot. There's also a lot of brands here in Sweden that um, obviously are way beyond us that we've been using and enjoying. And I would love to share some of those brands that we've really been enjoying um, from tonic waters to some handcrafted gins and all kinds of stuff. So that's a whole nother episode. But for now, if you check the journal, 
um, you can find at least some ideas to get you started if you want to try some things at home. So I will put all I will put that link in the description as well as some more information about what you can find in that in that little article. But basically, it's just some simple ways to decorate with to make some cocktails with, to make some maybe some homemade gifts with. There's so many ways you can use evergreen needles. I won't really do it justice in the blog post, but hopefully I give you some good ideas to start with and you'll feel inspired to go out and forage. And um, it's fun to go foraging and figure out ways to use it. Let me know in the comments what you try. I have to. Uh, happy winter and happy holidays from Sweden. We say go you! 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 Go